Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, my name is Jacob Boring. I'm going to be doing uh, my Atari 2600 Let's Play. We're going to be playing uh, James Bond. 1983 game, uh, created by the Parker Brothers, published by the Parker Brothers. The lead programmer was Joe Gaucher. It was available on the 2600, 5200, Atari 8 Big, ColecoVision, um, Commodore 64, Sega SG-1000. Multiple systems, uh, interesting game to say the least, but very simple. Kind of frustrating. We'll see what we're, we can get into. So let's take a look and uh, see what it's like. Power this up. So this is James Bond game, 007 I was talking about, based off some of the old films, loosely. I played it for a little bit. Very interesting to say the least. And I have some uh, issues with the game, of course. Frustrating. Uh, you ever think of Flappy Bird? It's not the same concept, but it's the same amount of just kind of annoyances. So, you've got whatever these things are. A helicopter and some sort of what looks to be a camera mounted sideways onto a drill. And some sort of holes in the ground that you have to hop over as well as avoid it being shot by these two things. Fairly straightforward. You shoot these diamonds to get points. You die fairly easy because they will come out of nowhere, or when you least expect it, and they'll just hit you like that twice in a row. I don't even know how I died there. I couldn't even tell you um, whether it was hitting the thing or getting shot. I can't tell. But yeah, so the best thing is just kind of stay back, try and get the points, make sure you don't get shot. Um, and it's, the helicopter is extremely unpredictable. You never know when it's going to be shooting, whether it's not going to be. I thought I had something to do with the little like, spotlight that it shines down, but it doesn't seem to be do anything because I just died again. And as you can see, it's shot with the thing, but this time it's going to see. Shows the spotlight, keeps going. And I wasn't in the air, it doesn't seem to detect me when I go up in the air. And you have so many lives, I think you have four lives um, to make it through. And I. I don't know if you can gain any more lives like in other games. It's fairly straightforward, but it's very limited. Very slow moving backwards, very fast moving forwards, but then there, the game really, I don't know if it's a programming thing or what, but you cannot go past the middle of the screen. And I think that's the most frustrating part because if you're trying to move ahead or stay behind, you can't even get there. And I understand games like Mario, you know, they have points where they stop you right where there's certain levels that move as you go, okay, but you don't see what's in front of you that much. You see what you need to see. And it's kind of frustrating. Because you see there's all those places you can go to, but you can't go there. Um, so you hit level 2, I guess this is level 2, and I just died again. Um, and it's a water level now, so now your car uh, is water, and I'm dead, and it's game over, and I have to start over again. It's interesting how this is going, to say the least. See, you, you can't even tell you're getting shot at that point. And there's some interesting things ahead of time in the next level that makes me pretty angry. Um, to the fact that there's no explanation as to what's going on in this game to begin with. Uh, you have no introduction. You get shot because you can't go past the middle of the screen. And... I just... I'm kind of annoyed with myself in this game to begin with because I could have picked Jawbreaker and that probably would have been more interesting. The name sounded more interesting, but I said, oh, James Bond's probably going to be a decent game, right? It's not Goldeneye, so we'll just hold back and gather some points and see if we can stay alive and not get shot over and over and over. And again, not shot. Uh, Joe Gaucher, I hate you. Okay, so now it dramatically transitioned into Waterworld. I don't know if I have anything to do. Oh, oh, ah. See, and that kills you too. And sometimes those last short periods of time, sometimes they last very long periods of time. It's kind of frustrating. Uh, and also the guns can shoot through the water, which is really awesome. Man, if I was to play games back in the 80s, uh, Atari 2600, ColecoVisions, Nintendo, man, I must have been. I would have been really bad. I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty good at playing Super Nintendo, uh, but that's what, early 90s? Late 80s? So, get 400 points, and I want to see if I can break 400. I think those are the highest I've reached so far in this whole game. There we go, 450. Okay, see, there it is. There it is. There's like a giant, um, 
thing. And I guess you just can't jump over it, you have to go under it. Let's see if, okay, so there's the thing. And there's a... Oh god. See, I thought I hit it in time, but you know. And the music. <sighs> okay. I ain't really playing Oregon Trail more than this. Alright guys, so that was my Let's Play of James Bond 007 from the Atari 2600. Let me know what you think. Um, I had an interesting time playing it. I don't know how I feel about the game. I don't know if I would ever return to it to see if I could beat it. Um, but it's definitely interesting. I don't know if, if you're interested in side scrolls, it's definitely worth a shot. It's one of the very old school um, side scrolling games. It's very simple and kind of the base of where a lot of games started. And it's kind of a, a gateway to movie games as well. So if you're interested, take a look. Uh, it's, it's no gold mine, like I said, but uh, it's definitely worth taking a look at. Maybe just to play for a little bit if you're bored or something. So, uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, take care, everyone. Look forward to seeing you guys in the future.